Tracker Tracker One Tracker. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Tabletop. Today we are talking about another fighters. One? And another one. We're doing another one. Another one. And another one. <laughs> uh, we're doing a episode on the fighter slash striker archetype. Your damage dealers, your melee classes. Um, your bruisers. In all, yeah, and all your knuckle systems. busters. Yeah, some would say in D and D, this is like your fighter, your barbarian, things like that. Or are we just restricting this to like? I literally just watched a video soldier. about this. Actually. Oh really? Oh, this yeah. is gonna be great. <laughs> great. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna loot this guy's uh, entire video. This is great. <laughs> Um, and then go. Yeah, and we'll talk. We'll talk all about about how to play, how to run, how to build, with that kind of stuff. But one thing I is just burning a hole in my mind is like the I syphilis. love melee. I <laughs> God. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, so the thing for me is that when playing as and DMing for like fighters, strikers, melee classes. As you oh go my. through the kind of progression scale, you usually have a disparity between certain archetypes and others when it comes to like power scaling, sure. and also it, it feel like the the way it feels changes. Mm -hmm. So when you get to like a level eleven fighter in D and D versus like a, a warlock or a sorcerer or something, it's like, hey, I use my sword and I attack four times, and in the end, I do twenty damage. It's like great. Uh, sorcerer, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm using some some sorcery points so I can twin spell this thing that's going to mm -hmm. take all the air out of the room so that they all start choking to death. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, that's so, so cool. Um, I strike four times my sword. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, for me, my big question for, for this is, like, how do you make this type of player feel just as cool and as a badass as all of the other players? You especially? don't. <laughs> you just can't. Yeah, like well, I think that's why this kind of archetype gets cast as like the party leader, because mm. it's like you're gonna, yeah, you do basic damage. Yeah, you're you're dropping the stand up front and be consistent. But they don't have a lot of um, like the way that they are built in most games is that like the bruisers are not the faces. Usually those are like the like in D and D that's like a paladin, it's a charisma class or a warlock or something. So like. Yeah, which, I, which is I agree, which is right? <laughs> which is dumb. Um, so, like, how do you make this? How do you make this feel good? And honestly, I've I've experienced this too with warlocks because it's like I use Eldritch Blast sure, three yeah. times or whatever. Yeah. It like mechanically feels pretty bad to do like the one thing that they're supposed to do, which is like get rough and tumble and tangle with people. I have a lot of thoughts about this whole concept. All right, question. hit us with it. The the like, uh, I think. So much of it has to do with system, right? Like magic and let's just talk about 5e because everybody's just like 5e. Mm -hmm. But like like magic doesn't cost anything in 5e. And so Well, technically it does. It has components and all that, but we just never play with them. Well, like like most tables. Don't. No, no, no. But it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no risk involved in casting a spell. The only gotcha. the only risk involved is maybe it doesn't work. And then, you know, there's no risk of it backfire. Like when you're doing these big, like God level things, these like mm. supernatural actions and stuff like that, there's just like zero consequence to you failing mm. apart from it just not working. Whereas the fighter like just has like a consistent thing. But every time he does this consistent thing, he is or she or <laughs> they are in danger of being hit back. Yeah. Like, you know, you got your you got your warrior up there on the front line. And then they're taking hits right back from yeah. from the enemy, and the sorcerer or the spellcaster or whatever, you know, like <laughs> is weaving fate. <laughs> yeah, it's like weaving row. fate, and you're just like, we have to defend the spell keep spellcaster, which is cool yeah. because it's kind of like you yeah. have to think about like like you could think about it as like, oh, we're like kind of doing these roles, like yeah. we're playing these parts on the team, like we're playing. And I think if you think about it that way, like maybe it's not doesn't feel that bad. Then mm. you're just like, oh, I'm I'm like. But what about mechanically too? You know what I mean? Like in your point, there's a couple things that came up. One being. I like the idea of a spellcaster having to use multiple turns to cast yeah. like crazy spells. Yeah. Because then the protect the spellcaster becomes more interesting mm -hmm. because they are going to be inert for maybe two turns. I mean, in 5e2, you have like the whole, you know, um, concentration, right? Yeah. Like it's like, oh, well, we have to make sure that they don't get hit. Yeah. yeah they don't get hit. And then. Yeah. Post casting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think in, yeah, in Cairn, you like need time and you need 
um, safety and stuff to catch a, cast a spell. Otherwise, you are like in immediate danger and you have to make a save. Yeah. Versus like trying to trying to do it. Well, here's an, another way of asking this that's not D&D specific too. Like in Monster of the Week, another one we talk mm-hmm. about all the time. Um, Rio's favorite game. <laughs> um, well, one of the things that you can do is like a lot of classes have, especially ones that are expected to fight in some capacity, have ways to either reduce incoming damage or increase outgoing damage. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. But also they're like maybe the most or the maybe the least interesting to take of all of the the playbooks that are like um moves that each of the playbooks have because it's like Oh yeah, the angel can like make or the the divine is what it's called. The divine can make it so that like their sword is on fire and they do extra damage each turn and like have new tags or they can have this ability to teleport and like that can be like really interesting mm-hmm. because of how it works. Uh, most people will take the thing that is interesting over the thing that is just up it's like how in D&D it is better almost all of the time to just increase your base stats because that's just going to increase the base math that you... I'm boring. Yeah, but it's boring, right? right? Yeah. Um, and I think that, like, so how... So you're saying D&D is boring. Uh, well, I have been known to say that. Um, but no, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking, like, when it comes to level progression and the feel of playing a fighter, you are encouraged throughout to just do kind of the boring but optimal thing just to keep up with all of the other players. This is why I don't like classes. <laughs> oh, yeah? You like a classless system? Yeah, I like classlessness. I think it's more interesting to just be like, um, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to do something different. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that would be like in a world where you pick up a sword, you have sword skills, and you pick up a staff, you have magic skills. Yeah. But... And I think that's why so when you're playing the fighter, you really need magic items. Yeah. You need the you need those special like loot pulls to make your fighter stand out. Yeah. You're not gonna do like the battle master, like with your priority dice, yeah, it gives you some options, some of the mechanics to play around with. But yeah, really you're not gonna do anything as as fun as a paladin smite or a heal or like the sorcerer's wild magic unless you have found items yeah and it's even like when you look at like rogues uh Mm -hmm. rogues have crazy damage output uh and have things that improve them as a melee class and like mystical perception yeah but then they get like a ton of cool utility stuff that happens in and out of combat like skill preference like skill expertise yeah you can also do stuff like second story work or quick hands that allow you to just be more of an interesting the fighters the fighter's just a fighter whereas the rogue is like a skill all of this a gossip an infiltrator yeah Yeah, right but but even rogues can do the thing of like swashbuckling Buckler yeah. or Mastermind, where, where they are sort of like a battle commander, mm-hmm. but at the same time, they still get all this extra stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so fighters it, suck, yeah. <laughs> it boring just feels, as hell. It just feels really boring. And even barbarians, are they like have more of the interesting stuff, uh, but they don't have enough, I feel like, to really make them yeah, sing. I, like, yeah. remember when you were level 20 barbarian, you're like, I can't do any of the things I want to do. I don't. I think could, I like barbarians. I could rage, and most of it was like, oh, I just won't take damage. But I didn't have, like, any... I was still attacking twice. Yeah. And, all right, that's my turn. Yeah. I can react to stuff. Well, I've got abilities to, like, mitigate damage. But that's not... But when you're a fighter, a you can attack... Fun button to push. Four times. Yeah, so, like, I don't know. I've I've always really struggled I think with... think 5e just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> we <just laughs> well, then let's think about like out. non-5e examples of this. Like, I, I still feel like this is a trap that most games kind of fall into. Well, yeah. let's look at Link. He's your basic go-to fighter striker. I think he's like more but of a, a ranger. A lot of that he's has to do with like ranger. fated destiny, though, and it's like the story elements drive his interestingness. Yeah. But basically, in combat, it's swing, 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 dodge, dodge, dodge. Yeah. Solve puzzles. Solve mm-hmm. puzzles. Yeah, have a, yeah. I think they just need to make the subtypes of fighters in Five E just more interesting. Yeah, um, flavor yeah. wise too, they're just all pretty boring. Like mm-hmm. again, going back to rogues, it's sort of like, oh, this rogue is like the gravekeeper rogue and can trap souls and talk to them and get information and then like even consume them so that they can become the the soul for a little while and like get through checkpoints or whatever. This game's it's broken. A, it's a very cool uh, rogue uh, like uh, archetype, and it's like for fighters, you're a samurai, which is still cool, but still like you're a samurai, you just hit things. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you hit things. 
with more finesse. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, I don't know. I feel I feel weird about fighters. You guys see that new show? Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's about samurai dinosaurs. This guy and his fucking dinosaurs. It's got, it's got a little. He's obsessed with dinosaurs. Oh, Dino I DNA. Like dinosaurs. <laughs> So it's a it has a T Rex and a baby T Rex and they're just going to like a little uh, ruined Japanese city, and they get into like a, a gang war with uh, these other swan. Is it? So they're the. Is they're, that Netflix? Uh, I have no idea. I just saw like, a, an advertisement. <laughs> Could have been a joke. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. couldn't that even be real? I wonder. But... It's something that I imagined. <laughs> I put um, it in the Discord, so you all should have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Um, yeah, so I, I just have no idea. Like, as a GM, if I had a fighter at the table um, of any game, I would try to do what you were talking about, Rio, either provide them with enough, like, story-significant items or stuff so that they can feel very involved mm -hmm. and a part of it. Um, well, I don't think that's a mechanical thing, though, because it's just like if you're like, oh, are you having fun in my game? It doesn't really matter if what class true. you are. It's just sort of like, do I like being a fighter if I'm so like I have a fighter in my game who I I feel like his his interests are more about like researching things and investigating weird goings on mm -hmm. and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which is just kind of like how I want all of my players to act. Yeah. But his character is very specifically like interested in like the God's body mm -hmm. or whatever. And so like, like that is like where the character and the player's interests like fall. And so, I mean, he often jokes about just being like, okay, I guess I'm going to hit it. Yeah. You know, but it's just kind of like, okay, that's all he has to do. So that's all he's going to do. He's yeah. like, I'm going to make a human fighter, the most boring thing I can make. It's <laughs> like, great, go for it. But do you yeah. ever get to the part where they're like in a spot where they're investigating something because that's their, the player's and mm -hmm. the character's interest, but the mechanical wall that you are hitting when it comes to their actual abilities and character. What kind been, of wall would I put up for them to the, prevent them from doing I'm not, things? I'm saying not yeah. so much that you would put up, yeah. but just like how they are able, how mechanically they are able to interact with the world. Because like you said, he's joking that so like, how, oh, I hit it or whatever, but that's like mechanically what they can do. So mechanically know? what would other character types do I mean like again rogues things. have uh, both finesse and like expertise and a lot of skills so that they might be able to like yeah, do I don't put things to... behind skill checks okay great love yeah. that um, we'll talk about that in a second but also like they also have higher um, like charisma based stuff so that they yeah can do I just stuff, make like, them negotiate and... normally that yeah, you don't have you like you can do a lot of stuff things. that is yeah. take mechanics out like roll less yeah yeah for for everything not just to make your fighters more but does that uh, this is uh, again and then does that make it worse for the other characters or whatever because that's the yeah. whole thing or whatever it's like that's it's not my fault yeah. that 5e sucks you this know what I mean thing like, is, like maybe <laughs> that's just the thing that we're coming into is like yeah. wow this is a very poorly balanced game like yeah and it but like it relies well, on as a party yeah you being like okay this is the part where you're good at it you get to like yeah. do stuff which is okay boring. you're we're now in a fight fighter this is your game like you get to decide like what's happening every, it's like, i i like the idea of everybody getting a chance to to like be the face or yeah. be yeah. this or whatever like like we have like a goblin character and whenever we talk to the goblins like obviously he's going to be the face of that interaction yeah. um and yeah i just i feel like it it puts it puts us in like little I, I think also the the idea of like balancing all of the classes like we don't really have to do that yeah you know, it's just kind of like, like everybody's like, why can't I do cool stuff? Like, I actually, this happened to me once when I was uh, playing in another game as a rogue, and then the two other characters were, um, a um, uh, a, a wizard and a um, and a bard, mm -hmm. and so in one in one turn, because I was also an assassin, I did like a ton of damage and just wiped out like all of the monsters that had just showed up. Yeah. And you're like, what? How can he, how can he output that much damage? And I'm like, you guys can do magic. Yeah. <laughs> I literally just shot something with a bow or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's like, let me have this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me my moment. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that I really like about like, um, apocalypse world esque systems mm -hmm. and, uh, NSR and all that kind of stuff is that kind of with a classless thing, but, just like a focus of, it feels much more about what does your character, what is your character good at slash like to do, yeah. rather than this is what well, your me, character is. Let me throw is. that question yes. at you, uh, host Nick. Yeah. If you were gonna, if you're gonna build someone who you were gonna be playing as a frontline striker. Yes. Your, your DPS dealer. 
what choices would you make as a player to make your character more interesting for you? Not mechanically, but just like, well, how would you make not that Not even person? in 5e or... Yeah, not, let, me, let me consider it 5e, but like, you're writing a story so about... Like if, we're, <laughs> if we're doing it like free creek spiel, we're not, we don't have any character sheets or whatever. We're just having a conversation and that's the game. Yeah. And then I'll roll die, dice if we need to or whatever. Mm -hmm. What what do you do? We okay, there's a there's a line of okay, who are all the characters here? All right. So you're you're the you're the whatever the melee guy. And then Rio, you can be maybe do you want to be like a spellcaster or like I'll an be, archer? I, I like playing support. Okay, yeah. Support. You can be like a cleric caster type. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are, you know, you guys are in a tunnel and then you find a a, a gang of like bugbears approaching and there's like Five of them. Mm -hmm. Like, what would what do you what would you want in that situation? What would you be like? I need to have this to be able to handle this. Um, in just like in a situation where we just <laughs> another run guy into, probably yeah we just run <laughs> Let's into say three bug bears. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just running into bug bears. Yeah, you're in a tunnel. You're okay. you're exploring. And like this a, is in five e. No, this, oh, is, this is just this is free random. creek spiel. We're right. just talking. What I would no uh, dice, nothing for me. The thing that I would want to do as a designer for the characters is have them all have tools in their toolbox where they can approach it in a lot of different ways. Okay. So like for me, like the ones that come up immediately are, I would love to skill check like stuff. So that could be a stealth check. That could be. Do so you want to be able to hide from these guys? Hide from them, maybe talk to them. Maybe oh do man, that, kind of that sucks. Cause like my first thing was like, oh, I want to be able to have like a light source, cast it behind my guy in front so that he can see, but they can't see. see. That's another that's good. Yeah. That's a, another great thing. But as a, 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 like a fighter or whatever, so let's, can't do that. Let's can't say you, use you have the utility. You have failed your ability to hide from these guys. Okay. And then what was the second? Thing, the 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 communication thing yeah you you try to parlay with them it doesn't work I would love like an ability then to you know uh, like experience as a because like a fighter feels like someone who is like been through yes. the shit exactly and so like mm -hmm. maybe there's like a bloodlust component where you can like stall them out with just like crocodile dundeeing them mm -hmm. kind of thing or or maybe you're you know you since you've fought bugbears before in like in the bugbear war you know yeah. that like bugbears react very territorially so like i know the customs of the the bugbears in that way oh, what about like that thing in hmm. sherlock holmes when robert downey jr was playing the character they did a thing in an action sequence where Sherlock Holmes is like, he's looking at the guy, they're going to fist fight. Oh, yeah, and, and it's like his mind palace it, or whatever. And he's like, he's in his mind palace. Like, oh, he's favoring his right leg. Uh, it looks like he has an injury yeah, in his I knee. Like that this shit? That would be the great place. Like, that would be a good thing for your frontline fighter to have yeah. is these three bugbears attack. Oh, this one's in the lead. That's the alpha. Like, that's going to be it, the dominant. That yes. one's favorite. Okay, I love well. this idea. I love the idea that you can, like, like, you can influence a fight just from your experience. Like, mm -hmm. I like the idea that mm -hmm. the GM goes, okay, the first three actions that the bug bears are going to do is this, this, and this. Ooh. You know this because you have fought them before and you can st you start seeing their That's muscles cool. moving in a weird way and you're like, I now have information I can turn to the to the table with and be like, okay, this is how we need to like prepare because this is what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, mm -hmm. if, uh, if uh, a character's... Like, please help! Like, uh, my family is on fire in this alleyway, <laughs> and they run you down an How alleyway. How often I've been out on a nice shopping day, and my family just catches on fire, yeah. <laughs> and you like run down the alleyway, and then the fighter immediately is like, you feel three presences here. One of them smells like blood. Like that is interesting because then sure. the fighter's like you know, aware of the world in, like, mm -hmm. a fighting way. Absolutely. Oh. And I feel like that is so much more interesting than... Yeah, picking Mad Max you know, when are driving down the road, like, oh, we should go over there, and, like, Max himself, yeah. like, that's bait. Yeah. Like, that's sort of, you know enough about how the world exactly. works and how people are going to try to attack you that you mm -hmm. can, like, think, sort of, like, have a pseudo sense of the... the, the that's a, another really awareness. great I think thing, that's yeah. cool, but I think also if... If you're presenting the world as the GM and you're, like, showing specific, like, things or whatever... Maybe the players could intuit that something is a trap or something mm -hmm. will happen like this. But I do kind of like the idea of being like, because of your veteran background yeah. or whatever, which is one of the mm -hmm. backgrounds I made for my game, 
you know what type of trap this is. Like, yeah. you know what type of stance they're taking. You know what type of strategy they're going to take. I think you that is You can read that is their fun. body movements even, yeah. you know? So, like, you're talking to some guards, and the guard, like, takes a little bit of a step back, and you're like, oh, he just stepped into a fighting stance. You, you know, know what I mean? Like, you, know what oh, would also be, you know what would also be interesting? Well, I think a lot of people might be able to read that this guy's about to get aggressive versus, yeah. like, this guy's about to be aggressive and maybe do this specific move yeah. and is ready to do this specific move. And so now you know how to counter it if this parlay goes bad. Yeah. You know? Or even to the point of like you shake someone's hand, it's like this person has like used a sword a lot. You, hmm. You're feeling from his hand all the calluses and yeah. where they are. This person's a sword master. Hmm. You're like, oh shit. Hmm. Like, I think this would be pretty weird. high level. <laughs> yeah, you know, totally. Yeah, like you would just have this thing where it's like, oh, like I'm shaking this merchant's hand or whatever, mm. and they are a they have calluses that merchants don't. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, that's stuff cool. like that. Just like a like a high perceptiveness of of, of a very specific yeah range, of like you know yeah. people who also fight. Yeah, and I think that it could be like you can expand it out, especially in a uh, classless system. Maybe they uh, have the ability to do some like battlefield medic stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, not like magically heal you or get you up, but maybe they can stop you from bleeding out or whatever. Yeah, like you're you're back. Like I don't know. I, I think it it is weird sometimes where like fighter classes are just like you're a battle master. It's like what does that mean? How did you yeah. master battle? Like mm -hmm. in well, what is, way? And you're like actually... oh, you know how to staunch wounds on the battlefield. You know how to do that, and yeah. so you're good yeah. at that. I think about this all the time around weapons in 5e. Mm -hmm. It's like it's boring. If you like, why isn't there a weapons master who can? A, I think it is stupid that a fighter, if they get into a brawl in a tavern or whatever, and they smash a glass, they start using like a, a bot broken bottle as a weapon. Do they need a feat for that? <laughs> you need a feat for that, and you're going to be rolling a D4 or less. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it feels like a fighter should be able to turn everything around them into a weapon yeah. and be able to that use be it. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you like whatever dice roll that you're going to roll for a weapon, it cannot be lower than a D6 or something. You know mm, what I mean? Something that's like that's another thing about the whole level. weapon system. It's like, oh, this sword is a D6 damage. This sword is a D8. I think weapons should just deal a D8. And if you're proficient, a D10. Like, sure. a yeah. blade should be doing the same. I don't like how every weapon is a different kind well, of damage. Well, in my system, <laughs> um, I've been adding, like, weapon tags. And so you can... I love tags. I love you can, like, tags. And so, like, swords will have, like, a parrying effect. So uh, I, I think it... it I think I took this from somebody else because I had made a pairing effect and then they're like, there is better. So I yeah. just took that. After the, yeah. after this quick break, I want to go in because we actually have a sheet in front of us that you have of all of these pole arms and everything. Well, that's and different. I kinda wanna, no, 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 totally. But it's just <laughs> yeah, inspiring yeah. me to talk about weapons a little bit more. So yeah. why don't we talk about fighters and weapons right after this? Hey, everyone. It's me, Nick, from the Tabletop Podcast. When I'm not hosting, I'm thinking about ways to create a better podcast for you guys, and I think I landed on something pretty fun. In fact, if you go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash tabletop and join for as little as a dollar a month, you can get access to a new episode a month that we're going to start putting out. In fact, we're going to be calling this one Wild Magic, I think, in that we're going to talk about anything and everything that interests us. That's not just TTRPGs, though there will be a lot of that. It is truly unhinged, and if you are a fan of the podcast and all of the hosts, you're definitely going to want to be on it. Uh, we're thinking of dropping these at the end of each month, so join our Patreon today. That is patreon.com slash tabletopped. Oh, and there's going to be so much more coming out in the new year there, so don't miss it. Sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to this episode of Tabletop, where we are talking about bruisers, fighters, and strikers. Before we left, we were kind of talking about weapons a little bit. Uh, bruisers, cruisers, and fight losers. <laughs> uh, and I really like the idea of being able to allow these characters to, to grow with weapons of some kind, maybe yeah. like... As they go through the levels, they keep the getting... weapon levels up. Yeah, exactly. Something yeah. like that. Because... You pick a favored weapon. Yeah, You're like a I'm a swordsman. Weapon. I'm a spear guy. They do more damage with a sword than anyone else can do with a sword. Yeah, like I just feel like there should a be one. a way that you get. I don't know something. Um, maybe you could make it so that like in your setting, there's you know the end of a war, and so you get the like thank you for your service kind of thing or whatever. <laughs> oh. um, and you oh, can you know what trade still, on that honor. Uh, Sword Art Online, because again, anime has the answer. Mm -hmm. But they had a bunch of like magical techniques 
uh, that they're because they didn't have a magic system and right. sword art. They just had sword techniques. It's like, like you can double just do slash. that. Yeah. It's like yeah, just ha give your fighter spell slots, but they just call it uh, stamina slots. Yeah. And they can use these like really super hard to counter uh, sword strikes. Yeah. I feel like they do need some sort of mechanic in sort of more crunchy systems that feel like willpower or something to the will mm. to keep fighting. You know, that's HP. It's it's HP, but maybe they have no, an ability not. to like alter it in some way or step in, step into it. my OSR corner. Okay, Frank. So there's a system based on Nave. I think it's Glaive, mm -hmm. and um, most of them rhyme. That would make sense. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Gla Like I think it's Glaive that does this. Um, but basically, in Nave, the the main sort of like one of the big like mechanics of Nave is the inventory system. It's a slot based system mm -hmm. and your slots can also fill up with other things besides, um, well, in Glaive and then Karen, cause Karen also uses this slot system. It can fill up with other things besides, and Mouse Raider also does this, fill up with other things besides items. Um, and so usually it's like wounds or fatigue or whatever and that type of thing. And so it's basically like, okay, you have enough slots open so that you can expend one of the slots, like put a fatigue into it to do like a combat maneuver or cast a spell. It's how the spell casting system works too. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I think that can be really useful. I think another thing that um, I think it's cool that Battlemaster, I think I like Battlemaster in 5e. I think that's fun, but I think it's like too limiting. Mm -hmm. um, I watched a video by Deficient Master recently. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really great YouTube channel. Um, but he was basically saying, he was he was talking about the fighter this exact topic in fact um and like which fighter is the best mm -hmm. and he referred to the dungeon crawl classics fighter mm -hmm. and it's basically the fighter gets a um like a die that increases as they level up mm -hmm. and that die if you roll on a three or above i think it's also added to your damage mm -hmm. like it's an extra damage die that you get because you're a fighter and yeah. you're good at fighting um, but if that one rolls a three or above, you can do like a combat maneuver. Mm. But that combat maneuver is not from a menu of items. It's just whatever you want it to be. That's cool. And so, well, like, you know, within reason. Yeah. But it's just like you saying, like, yeah. I sweep the legs from, from under yeah. this person or like, as I fight with my spear, I like put the, the butt of my spear in between his like knee and his other leg and sweep to like get yeah. him off balance. Or even that. just like I, I blind him or something yeah. with this or like <laughs> I throw this guy into this other guy. Yeah. You know, like cool shit like that that makes you feel like I'm especially good at fighting because I can, you know, I'm the one that can do this type of stuff. I think it also would just be fun mm -hmm. to like, like I kind of wish the different classes were stuff like, like a noble fighter like you are kind of like the the knight you know what i mean archetype yeah. and mm -hmm. you can inspire the people around you by how heroic you are and all that kind of stuff and yeah. how brave and but there could also be like a dirty fighter that you know scoops up sand and yeah. throws it into their eyes or whatever you know like there's um there's a background in cairn 2 that is pretty cool it, it's like um it's like you have like an oath and so, like, while you're maintaining that oath, you get, like, these special abilities. That was it's good kind in, of like a knightly oath thing. Yeah, in um, then when you don't, Monster you of the it. Week, when we played with Steven, yeah. there was, his character was a gumshoe, which was sort of like a PI, but, like, he had a code. And if yeah. he violated his code, he lost all of his powers that he mm -hmm. could do, which were great. Typical I gumshoe. I love that. Um, but I just think that, like, that sort of stuff that makes playing more active. Because, yes. like, I've also run mm -hmm. into this with other classes, too, like the alchemist missed um when i was playing natasha at the mm -hmm. end of of that there i and we talked about it at the table at the time i was like i have crazy support skills yeah but all i'm doing each turn is i move five feet to the right so i have visibility on this person i cast haste and i throw uh, a potion to this person just like mechanically my options just become what am i dealing out to folks so that they can do their things even better, which is what they're supposed to do, but I found yeah. it very boring. Yeah, like, just it's not for you. It's not for me. Um, yeah. and I, I actually really liked playing a support class yeah. in uh, in the Rio's game. Oh, yeah. The, the Druid I, one, yeah. I, I, I just feel as though, like, and maybe this is me kind of slipping towards a classless system. Mm -hmm. I just kind of want to be able to do, I want to be a part of the game always in every mm. situation i want to be able to be a voice in the room and to like have some input main on character that. energy you're owning exactly it. Yeah. yeah no but like <laughs> but you know in like a, I don't know i just feel as i feel as though 
it's very limiting to have a hyper specialized character that can do one type of mechanic really well. I would really more prefer, you know, you can situationally do... you want to be able to do things. Yeah, I just I guess I want to feel like, oh, thank God we had a fighter. You know what I mean? <laughs> hmm. Like what a what a crazy thing just happened because we have a fighter in the group. Like one of the things that um, a lot of Powered by the Apocalypse systems do is that you're an archetype, but it's not like a class. It is you are the pinnacle of what this archetype means. Sure. There's only one of you mm. in the world, and it's like because you're the main character or whatever. But that means that when you are the expert, the reason why you can do all these crazy things is because you are like the best expert. You know, I mean, even from level one, you're also already like way beyond an average person. Mm -hmm. um, and I just like that. I like that feel, especially for like a high, like superhero energy, I well, guess, game. I, I think in those games too, it's like, I think the, for me, the draw isn't like, I'm the most powerful jinx here, right? It's like yeah. I am quintessentially this thing. Yeah. I think like the the quintessentialness, the quintessence of it for me is less is more important than the super heroicness of it. You know what it is? I think it's that it's like the form follows function kind of thing. Mm. In D and D, form follows function. In other systems, function follows form. Which I really like. So Unpack when you're that a little bit. So like you as the jinx, like sure. or as the um cursed or whatever. You kind of came to that via like the story you spooky. would build. That's what it the was. spooky, that spooky. was it. Yeah. And I had the jinx move which yeah. all the time. <laughs> but you had like sort of came up with this character idea and that archetype lended like lent itself to what you wanted to do. And so you the, took it. No, I think the archetype I chose the archetype because I thought it was cool and then I made the character. Sure. But yeah. like for me, when it comes down to it, like in D and D, I always start with I want to play this class. Whereas in other systems, I'll be like, Oh, I want to play like this type of character, and then I'll look through and well, find. Well, I do that with really. really. D and D. I like, oh, what kind of character I want to play, and then I think, Oh, what class best suits that? Mm. Yeah, but have I you ever have way. you ever picked a, a fighter when doing that? Just curiosity. I've never. Uh, back when I first started playing, yeah, yeah. I was playing a dwarven an explorer, and I was like. Oh, Fighter seems to work. Yeah, yeah. I've ever played a And then uh, Abraham fighter. was, I was like, I'm just going to play a hermit who lives in the woods and fence for himself. And that was a fighter too. Yeah. Yeah, that could have, that's true. You did play a fighter, but you were so, you were like, I want to be an Eldritch Knight actually. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of like, you're like, I want utility. I am already <laughs> bored of being a fighter. I'm going to be I want an to do these flashy things. Yeah. 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 Immediately, like, yeah, let me be this fighter, but let me also have green flame cantrips. Yeah. But like, imagine. You know, you going into to battle and instead of like trying to use like spell slots or whatever, it was like I activate bloodlust, which allows like this effect. That's too metal. It's Give barbarian. me something different. That's maybe barbarian. I don't want yeah. bloodlust. Yeah. I want Keen adrenaline eyes. rush. <laughs> well, I think I think the fighter, the battle master too, has this where they can study somebody for a while and then they can no, like that's learn. Ranger. No, the the fighter does this too. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. I thought it was um, just Steven did this with Nock, and my oh. player who's a fighter now is also did this. Yeah. And but it's like very mechanical. It's like, do they have more or less HP than I do? Do they have higher or lower strength than I do? Like that type mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. So it becomes like kind of mechanized, but I like the idea. I like that idea yeah, that of being like the really fighter <laughs> can analyze, you know, a monster's whatever, and then you can get you can glean this information from it. Yeah. Whereas like I think in a game where I would allow you to do that, I'd probably just be like, that wasn't a stat focus. I'd probably just be like, yeah, this thing could fucking kill you. I was just thinking about this. Like in um, like a Monster of the Week game, I would just, I, and I have done this before mm -hmm. for characters who are combat focused. Like you you punch it or you shoot it and you're looking at how the bullet impacts and you're yeah. like, oh fuck, this isn't going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I and like you don't give that to other people, but you give it to the fighter because right, they've yeah. like, you know, done a bunch of this. Um yeah, I think that that's a very like what kind of information can you give yes. as a GM to these people that, are, that is unique and different that you archetypes wouldn't give to other people. Yes, yeah, I think the fighter definitely can lend itself to that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I also yeah, I think that there's um, there's a lot that you can do, but it's always outside the actual mechanical rules, um, except for the stuff that you were just talking about. But like, I I spend five minutes watching this monster. Mm -hmm. What strength level is it or whatever like yeah. like there are ways that they try to do that in current systems but i think that a lot of it too can feel like hey i'm gonna give this to you as the gm because you need 
you you deserve a little bit more. Your archetype feels like it needs a little a little more. Like mm-hmm. one thing that I really love um, the the wronged I would feel feel like is like kind of a berserker fighter mm-hmm. in Monster of the Week. One of their moves is very fight focused, but it just has such cool fucking lore implications. Where one of their moves is I cannot die until the fight is done. Mm. Like I am, I am here, and then at the end of the fight. All, I take all the damage right away. Mm-hmm. Like, I it, don't save from it or whatever. I just take 30 damage, which is, right. you know. Insta-kill. Cre- yeah, insta-kill five times over. Right, um, yeah. But that is such a cool thing to give mm-hmm. somebody as a choice to be like, your character is a fucking badass and a hero, and in this moment, you can Boromir hold a bridge until the fight is over yeah. by yourself. Like, that's crazy cool. Like, that's such yeah, a cool yeah. ability to have in your back pocket as, like, I have this pull emergency switch, whereas... I cannot lose. Yeah. I will <laughs> this, not this win, but time. I cannot lose. <laughs> I think it's... Yeah. yeah. I think in my game, that might be, like, an object. Yeah. Like, you would be, like, you take, like, a intense drug or something like yeah, that, and oh, you just, yeah. like, completely numb to all the slings and arrows. Yeah. And then it all just hits you. Yeah. Or, I don't know, some type of enchantment or training. If you two could build a fighter slash striking class from Mm -hmm. the ground up, what are the things that you would absolutely include to make it feel like what we're trying to get at from different from D&D? Because obviously we don't love how they do the fighter class, Mm -hmm. but like what what do you need in that class to make it feel and function correctly? You need something that's going to keep them on their feet. Mm. So a way to remove harm yeah. or ignore incoming damage. Be like, you're just going to like grit your teeth and go. Yeah. Ignore the pain yeah. type abilities. Yeah. I Again, I, I feel like that willpower, and maybe mm-hmm. it's not the right word, but I agree. This, the thing of like clenching your teeth through something Which, feels very yeah. fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I love the idea yeah. of like, I think... Uh, the monk does this with catching arrows in D&D, but like, okay, you get hit for eight damage, roll your D6. Okay, you ignore four of that. Yeah. As like a way to just the fire is going to keep on their feet. Yeah, like instead of a monk being able to catch it or whatever, maybe they like put their hand up and like three arrows go through their arm, but then they like pull it out and they're ready to fight some more. You know, that kind of shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe they don't. They just break it so that yeah. it doesn't, doesn't fuck them up. Um, you know, another interesting thing about... Um, shit, what was I going to say? We're talking about fighters. Oh, the the reading, the situation thing mm-hmm. that you were talking about, mm-hmm. I think that's a really great ability. I yeah. think that would be cool. I think the converse of that could also be like the GM gives you false leads because, mm-hmm. and then you just become like kind of like yeah. trigger happy or something like that yeah, because totally. you're, you're paranoid because you've been in all these fights and stuff. That so would, like it wears away at you. I would love maybe a really cool thing you could do. Maybe it's too like um, leaning. I don't want to do it if like kind of like traumatic stuff because I think that like people play these games to get away from that stuff yeah. but like maybe you take a take the idea of this person's been through like a lot of very mm-hmm. violent hectic situations maybe they have some like trauma Steven around that universe future yeah exactly and so like maybe it's like they can do like spend some stuff to do some crazy shit, but their trauma gets worse or their PTSD or whatever, where they're just like, you know, trigger happy, like yeah, you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And like the information that the GM gives well, them. Well, that gets worse uh, and worse. games like Thirsty Sword Lesbians have those little things where you're. You you break you leave the scene yeah you can no longer interact like I think that would be really fun yeah as... I think I think one really good kind of mechanic that I've seen around that maintains player agency but also gives this consequence is like you can do that but you will take a penalty like mm-hmm. that that happened with um with my character Carmen the spooky yeah it's like it's like yeah if you if you do this you will take this negative effect like you'll take harm or whatever in this case it was like if you use luck then you become one of your it for the spooky was like dark impulses and you chose them and one was like paranoid and so i'd say like you suspect your friends of stealing from you or whatever it is you know i think i think something like that where you're like kind of mechanically pulling at something but you're not taking away agency i think it's the same thing that i feel about like paralysis rules yeah paralysis rules are really boring Mm -hmm. um because you just start like you can't do anything, but then there's this like kind of replacement that I've seen in places called agony, mm. and so like you can you can do something, but you will get hurt. 
Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. cause you're going to be in pain trying to fight off this paralysis or you can stay paralyzed and nothing happens to you. I'm just thinking about you that song what? from Into the Woods. Agony. <laughs> you know what could be a really cool mechanic for this kind of character would be a way to resist status effects. Ooh. Okay. Like, like a roll or something. Like you can shake like, off a status effect. Yeah. Like oh, somebody once. starts paralyzing you and you like, you know, f- again, grit your teeth and yeah. like force your mo- limbs to move even though you're turning to stone or whatever. I think, <laughs> um, I think you could probably do this in, in a game like Karen, which is, um, you know, like, cause I, I made a Karen hack. Um, but like where you, you could probably like take a fatigue to avoid some kind of status effect or whatever instead of taking the status yeah, effect. Yeah, I'm definitely saying, oh, you're going to be poisoned. You can just take some damage and just vom- force yourself to vomit it yeah. out. Yeah. Or something could, like that. That would work. Or like you HP cut yourself so yeah. some of the poison comes out. Yeah. You know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that well, I was can't th- get into me if my arteries are open. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing that I'm I'm interested too is that how do you make these things not passive? So I like the idea that you are choosing to trade Mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. Because like another way you could have done it that's very passive is to say it takes an extra action for SAS effects to affect you. So like instead of happening on one turn, it takes two turns. So that you basically are like, I'm starting to turn to stone. I'm going to get behind that rock and like figure this out. (laughs) Get behind that rock. Um, That's good. But I think that that feels a little passive. I don't know. Um, What are some other like active effects that you could build into this type of character to make it feel I think one thing we were talking about before was um maybe between the break or whatever was um weapon mastery Mm -hmm. I still like this idea having like triggering triggering effects like if you're very good at a polearm or whatever you know like obviously like polearm mastery or whatever and Mm -hmm. 5e like yeah that works um but like something like a parry with a with a long sword you know you gain a certain amount of ac or you ignore like damage rolls of one or two or something like that um which is what i have in my system and you know something like um like a club like a like a mace or something can temporarily reduce an enemy's armor Mm -hmm. something like that yeah i like the idea of you fight with a weapon for so long like it just starts to absorb magic in it as well oh okay oh so you you you, 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 just like mastering it you met yeah mastering it but also like as a separate thing you fight with a sword for so long, it starts getting magical enhancements on it as a way, like your fighters. Yeah, that's also cool. That could also, yeah. yeah. As yeah, I think that even if you like, like if you want to go with like a low magic setting and you go more with Franco's side of like mastering it, you could mm-hmm. make give them like, I'm using air quotes, but like magical effects that are that come from you just being super familiar with the blade. You know what I mean? Right. Um, like, oh, it has a bleeding effect. Yeah. Like, the like bleed you know, extra. Yeah, you know how attack. to like carve. You know the how to blade nick the away. arteries. And, yeah. And... Or like you just like when you stab, you always like twist as you take it out so yeah. that they bleed or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just a brutal. Extra. I, I kind of like negative well, also effects could, on characters yeah. too. I think it could be really fun that. You're a bruiser, and so when you're in like a public situation, like that drunk guy that wants to come up and start something will always come up to you to be like, "Yeah, fuck!" Like you you attract fights. Yeah, exactly. Like people who are looking for fights come to you. Yeah. Oh, I (laughs) I think that that could be really fun. Um, Just so then it also gives the character much more time to be able to use their in combat stuff, as even in social interactions, they're dealing with these (laughs) aggressive characters. I think that's that's just really fun. That could be good. That's a, that's a fun like character flaw. Okay, you can take a twenty strength, but people will always come to you looking for a fight. Yeah, they're looking to best slag like, you. Yeah, <laughs> damn, that's funny. Um, Power and vice challenge. There's um, mm. I think it's like an Afro samurai or something, but there's like a ranking system of samurais, and you never wanted to be the first or second because if you're first, someone is al- always coming to kill you. The no. second person is always trying to kill if you. If you're the second. You can kill the first. Yeah. So you're always going after the number one spot. Yeah. But if you're number two, anyone can come take the number two yes, bandana. Yes, that's what it is. So yeah. if you're number two, everyone's after to get you, and you're after number one. And if you're after number one, you only have to worry about number two. But number two is always coming for you. Yeah. But, but if you're number one, who are you going after? You're just the best. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I also think that you could um, – there's, like, lots of ways as a, a GM that's not in, in baked into the class, like – you. For Rio, we did a, a rumor jar in our campaign. Yeah, like maybe all of the rumors that we put in the rumor jar about a character that is a, a bruiser, striker, fighter kind of thing is always has like a tinge of violence to it. So mm. it's like even if it's like a very positive one, that it's also like. 
they used their bare hands to like stop a, a thief and broke both of his legs and like wow what a hero but also scary kind of yeah, like, it's that like kind of uh, stuff. yeah <laughs> uh, really fucked him up <laughs> yeah yeah like wow that person like uh really got his, it's like his life changed but uh that guy was cool i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that that could be fun. Any other kind of final things that you'd want to throw into a class before we start wrapping up? Yeah, this makes me want to play. <laughs> yeah, build a, <laughs> yeah, a thing. It's like, uh, definitely give them like uh, rallying abilities too. Talk like, about well, how they can yeah. fix themselves, but how they can also like encourage others like, to keep oh, yeah. fighting, keep going. Like yeah. your spotter in the gym. <laughs> one more. Give me one more round. Of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I also, um, yeah, for me, the things that I really like so far is I really like the idea of them being so good in combat, but I also like the idea that they're just like really in, they are present in their bodies and are so good with their bodies that they can pick stuff up quickly mm -hmm. or maybe they like benefit from training in a different way yeah. or so that the character can also start being They're just a good dancer too. Yeah. I mean, that's like the thing with football players. Like there was a coach that was like, hey, everyone on the team is going to learn ballet as we go into our season and it one made them all like so much more like flexible and able to like compete better, but it also improved their teamwork a lot because they were all like, you know, doing this really hard thing together. <laughs> and so they, yeah. they learned to bond. Um, so it's kind of like that where if you're, you know, an ex mercenary, maybe, yeah, you have all these like aches and pains or whatever, but you're also really good at, you know, picking up what you need to learn to survive, you know? So that could be cool too. Mm. Yeah. Thinking like a like a battle scar system too. Yeah, you're just like, like if um, like anytime you take a certain amount of damage or a critical damage or something like that, you you know your your old injury flares up. <laughs> yeah, you have to take a fatigue or something. Or, yeah, or whatever. I mean, so Mac is making his game that's like card based, mm -hmm. and um, the 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 magic in this system is based off of your character's first memory. And memories, your first memory kind of manifests a, a, a ability in you somehow. It's sort of in a cyberpunk setting where like some corporations are basically manufacturing first memories in kids and stuff so that they can build people with specific powers. Um, Classic. You know, you know, dark. But my character, as we test it, is called, um, what was his name? I think it was like Jack Smith or something. But he was in the car with his mom when they got into a big car accident. She passed away. And that's his like first really big memory. And it was because there was like this big creature walking across the road. And as a kid, he's like, it's a huge monster or whatever. And so his memory makes him turn into like essentially a werewolf when mm. he gets like crazy and he becomes like un unstoppable, like damage doesn't really affect him. He becomes super strong, but like wild and out. Um, and so I've been thinking a lot about the, the fighterness of this too. And the thing that I really like about like the system is that you can create what are called schemas, which are things that have happened to you that then lend to a good and a bad effect about your character. For example, this guy is super unlucky. He's always been a blue collar worker. He was working in a machine shop and a machine like clipped the tip of his pinky finger off. Uh, and now he's super scared of machines. Like he's like, I don't like machines, but also he has a super high pain tolerance because he's gone through like all of these things in his life. And that's just like tags on your character forever. So I think that for your, what you were saying about battle scars, mm -hmm. maybe the battle scar system can be like a positive and negative effect that you yeah, decide cool. at the start of the game of like, yeah, my, my leg sometimes is like gammy and like, I can't only walk like at half speed or something. But the positive is that, like I, the reason why my leg is like this is because it like almost went through like a wood chipper. And so now I have incredible tolerance to, to like horrible things happening to me. <laughs> Not squeamish. Well, yeah, Sometimes exactly. Sometimes walk like, slow. Yeah like, yeah, like intimidation effects are like not effective. <laughs> yeah. It's like I literally have been through a wood chipper. Like what are you going to do to me? It's worse. <laughs> Oh, All right, everyone. If you like Tabletop, you can go to our website, tabletoppod.com. Hit that contact form and we will read whatever you send in please do you can also go to our patreon pretty cool stuff there you can enter as a free or paid customer i guess friend client i don't know your person on the patreon pal yeah. pal there you go um and if you're a pal you can get free episodes of a podcast we make called gilmore guys just kidding it's called wild magic but it's slowly turning into gilmore guys so enjoy if you understand what that means all right everyone <laughs> i'll see you on the next episode goodbye bye, bye.